The time is coming up to one o'clock UK time, one o'clock in the afternoon. Wherever you are in the world, welcome to Every Creature Commission Television. Live streaming at ecctv.org. Also, you can find our archives at our YouTube channel, Every Creature Commission TV. Our first program today is The Midnight Cry, presented through Lindsay Griffiths. Rushing wind And it's closer now Than it's ever been I can almost hear the trumpet As Gabriel sounds a
good afternoon and welcome, dear viewers and listeners. Remember, those of us who are believers, the time is nearer now, far nearer now than when we first believed. For everybody, the time is nearer now than it was last week's program. You see, Jesus is coming again in the clouds in glory. It says the dead in Christ shall rise first to meet him in the air. This is a mystery, a mystery, because somehow glorified bodies will rise to meet him in the air. And then those who are still alive will be, it says, quickly, in an instant, it says, in the twinkling of an eye, it says in the Bible, will be quickly changed. They as well will be changed. You see, Jesus, it says in the Word of God, the Bible, He is the firstborn, the firstborn from the dead, as well as the first and the last the Alpha and Omega, the beginning of the end. He's the firstborn from the dead, the first ever to be raised like that from the dead. Isn't that wonderful? So we are following him because he is the one and only one who could conquer death and hell. And it says in Revelation, that great book of the end times, the great vision of the second coming of Christ. And all the other things around that, like the tribulation. You see, he said, I am he that liveth, that liveth and was dead. And I have the keys of death and hell. You see, he has the keys. He has the keys. He is the firstborn from the dead. And he came back to earth after he was crucified, lay dead, and rose again on the third day to conquer death and hell forever. You see, he came back in a glorified body, although he was flesh and blood, because he said to doubting Thomas, he said to him, touch me, feel the nail prints in my hands. He said, feel the spear gash in my side. And Thomas, even doubting Thomas said, he did that. And he said, my Lord and my God. Jesus even cooked breakfast for his disciples. Fish and honey he gave them. Delicious brekkie he cooked for them after they'd been out fishing all night. And he ate, you see, could eat and drink and you know, people could feel his body. But now, now he sits in heaven at the right hand of the Father, God the Father in glory, having sent the third person of the Trinity, God the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to indwell, to live in the hearts of all believers so that he can lead us and empower us and lead us, guide us into all truth. Because God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit are three in one. And we are made in the image of God. Read the book of Genesis. It says that he made man in his own image. And we are, we are a spirit. Remember, we have a soul and we live in a body. Three in one person though. So we are like a three in one in the image of God. And we shall all be changed in those last days and we shall await the coming now. But there are a few little things, big things actually, that we are commanded to do. First, first believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Get saved, accept him as your savior today before it's too late. And then for those who do believe and who have received Jesus into their hearts and repented of their sins, yeah, those words you never hear nowadays, repent. Repent, turn the life around, give our whole lives to him. Repent of the wickedness we've done. Because we've all sinned, everybody has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. 
That is scripture, and that is absolutely true. So we need to repent, turn around our lives in him, and believe. And when we've done that, folks, when we've done that, we are ready, or we should be ready, to fulfill the Great Commission, which is up above my head there, the Every Creature Commission, because this is Lindsay Griffiths speaking to you from the studios of the Every Creature Commission television, ECCTV. And we are dedicated to fulfill that command of the Lord Jesus Christ, the soon coming King, which is, Go ye, Mark 16, and also see it in Matthew 28, and preach the gospel to every creature. And you see, he's told us to do that. All of us, all believers, not just me standing here, he's told us to do that. And then the end will come. He actually won't come back, can't come back till the gospel is preached to every creature. So that's the task he's given us. It's no use just sitting there like so many believers or say they believers do. And they say, oh, well, we don't need to worry because Jesus is coming back for us and he's going to take us up into the sky. Well, not really. We've got quite a lot to do here because we are his body on the earth. And we face, in the end times, much in the way of tribulation. But remember, before we go on with the scriptures and what else we're going to look at in this program, remember that only Jesus died for us. Not Allah, sorry, but not, not Muhammad. Not Hare Krishna. Not Buddha. And certainly not any members of the secular society who don't appear to believe in anything but just complain about what everybody else believes in. So Jesus is the only one to come to earth for this purpose Christ was revealed to destroy all the works of the evil one or the devil. And he did this by coming to die for us all, a once and for all sacrifice, the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sins of the world. He went to the cross for us, died, took all our sins and sicknesses and sorrows, made them his very own in the words of the hymn, and then rose again after that terrible death. The old rugged cross, this song says, made the difference. Too hard. 
now the doors ring with love, warmth and laughter. Since the giver of life moved inside, oh, a room filled with sad hush and peace. Remember, this is true about the cross, it's so true. Just think of these, that dear man walking as an empty shell in the first verse. Our hearts go out today to the family and friends of that dear man, Charles Kennedy MP. That man, outwardly, so loving and wise and kind and clever and intelligent and astute and honorable standing up for what he believed in against huge odds in the house of commons concerning the iraq war yes very lovable man very very brilliant man but inside full of agony and pain and defeat because that man died way before his time because in his case he was a slave to alcohol you see this is not being judgmental because there but for the grace of God go all of us it's not being judgmental it's showing love but this was a shell of a man bound for heartache and defeat for all his natural ability for all his greatness because the burden and the stress and the agony of what he was facing in the world was too much for him you see Jesus cries out right now he says come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and he labored and was heavy laden like millions of others he said and I will give you rest you see, if only dear Charles Kennedy, Charlie Kennedy as we called him in Scotland, had known this, if only somebody had told him and he'd accepted Jesus as his living and personal saviour, he could have given all these burdens to Jesus because he already took Charlie Kennedy's pains and agonies and stresses and pressures. He already took these to the cross 2,000 years ago and oh how he longs to set free the alcoholics and the drug addicts and those who are slaves to all kinds of devices of the devil to try and keep people trapped in death and heartache and defeat oh Lord we pray today that people will accept Jesus 
that they will accept Jesus as a living Savior. I am he that liveth, he says, that liveth and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore, and I offer you everlasting life. That's what he said. John 3, 16, Jesus said to Nicodemus, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's what he offers today. So choose you this day, dear viewers and listeners, whom you will serve. For as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, a lot of people a lot of people don't even know the story of Jesus because the people of God are being kept from openly praising, openly preaching the word. Straight preachers are being arrested and even sometimes in prison. I'm talking in this country, never mind what's going on in Iraq and Iran and Syria and uh, North Korea and all over the world. Street preachers are being arrested. Bakers are being fined. Businesses are being bankrupted. Christian businesses are even closed down. Schools are being closed down. Just for, this is already happening here now. Just because they want people to know and hear about Jesus. And they're prepared to stand up, make a stand for the truth. Even if it costs them money, even if it costs them imprisonment, even if it costs them their lives. This is serious stuff today. We need to have that liberty and freedom that's in written, written in the British Constitution to preach the word of God and propagate the Protestant Reformed religion. I quote from the Constitution, established by law. Dear viewers and listeners, if you want to know more about this in these short days before Jesus comes again, it's only a short time, so you need to know now the truth. Look up the new website associated with this ministry, which is called the Constitution Keepers website, and you will be blessed. You will be blessed out of your socks because you'll see the foundations that this country is really built on. Not the plastic crap, forgive the crudeness, of the enemy that he puts out to try and entertain us, you know, with things like all that stuff around the Olympic Games and all this other stuff that he tries to entertain us with. You see, he wants us to turn into complete zombies. He wants to, but Jesus says, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. That's what he says. He doesn't say, become a zombie and dance to the music. He says, watch and pray. Because we need to in these last days. Amen? Let me sing one more song to you, which is how we love to tell the stories of Jesus. Tell me the story of Jesus Right on my heart every word Tell me the story
how he live again no he not so the truth and contend in Paul's words to Timothy. Contend for the faith once delivered to the saints because these days we live in look at 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 1 it says there will be perilous times. That's like times of danger in the last days and over and over again, Jesus told his disciples for as long as he was on earth. And when he was telling them about the end times before his coming, which is in Matthew 24 and 25, for example, he told them, watch and pray. Yes, because the times are so dangerous. There's so many false prophets and antichrists. So many devices of the enemy in these last days because the devil knows his time is short. Now, one of the ways, especially in the Western world, that the enemy works is through legalism. And I want you to just look at this verse with me, which is in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And it talks about the letter of the law. I'm just looking for it now, actually. I think I'm at the wrong page. 2 Corinthians 3, chapter 4. That's my prompter in the back. Pardon? 2 Corinthians 3, verse 4. Oh, it, whoopsie. I think I'm at the wrong bit here, you know, because I can't find it, actually. You know, 2 Corinthians 4, uh, verse 3. Well, anyway, <laughs> what it is, sorry about this, folks. Excuse me. Excuse the producer I've got my of the show. <laughs> Hello, hello, viewers. The producer of the show. I look terribly big there. I'm coming back here. Well, first of all, Did the you? wife is in Daniel. Oh, and, no. And I think we better go <laughs> to 2 <laughs> Corinthians. I took the wrong book. Not that I want to be legalistic, mind, you know, but to look for 2 Corinthians. 
We come to 2 <laughs> Corinthians itself oh, rather oh, in Daniel. Unless sorry, the, sorry. Unless if you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, uh -huh, we come, as such trust have we through Christ to God watch. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 4. Ah, there it is. Then 5 and 6. <laughs> this is the producer of the show saying goodbye. <laughs> 2 Corinthians is now in in the New Testament, yes, not did. in Daniel. <laughs> I am so sorry, dear viewers and listeners. I did lose the plot there. And, and you know, I thank God I've got a producer who's also my husband, who's also a prompter. <laughs> and he just prompted me. I am so sorry. This is the verse that I particularly want you to look at today. It's really important. And then hopefully um, in future, we'll be able to look at a particular example of that from the book of Daniel, which is why I was in the Old Testament. Do apologize. It says, and such trust have we through Christ to Godward, 2 Corinthians 3 verse 4. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. In other words, He works in us and through us because He's the head and He's joined to us the body. And He works through us because by ourselves we can do nothing. We need him to fulfill the tasks that were set before us, including the Great Commission. Verse 6, who hath also made us able ministers of the New Testament. Oh, well, that teach me. It says the New Testament. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter, that's the letter of the law, killeth. But the Spirit giveth life. Amen. You see, God must have the preeminence. Jesus must have the preeminence in everything, and so must the Spirit. And what's happening in these last days, and it's very, very bad, particularly in the Western nations, particularly Britain and Europe, the EU countries, is that the letter of the law is being used against true believers, those who stand for the truth and who stand for the true constitutions of their nations. So it's becoming very hot. It's a bit like a fiery furnace or a lion's den. Did you know, we need to look at this really in more depth, maybe the next program, but Daniel was one of the great prophets of God who was given great amazing visions and signs and dreams and scriptures as well, words from the Lord about the end times. Very similar to John. You see, Daniel, if you look in the book of Daniel, the angel Gabriel, I think it is, or Michael, and God, anyway, they call him a man greatly beloved. He was greatly beloved of God, that means. He was a wonderful, holy, and righteous prophet who really loved the Lord. Not only him, but also... If you look at John, the apostle who wrote the book of Revelation, he was also called the beloved disciple, the disciple whom Jesus loved above all of them. He did. He was closest to him. He was the one who sat with his head on Jesus' breast at the Last Supper and was a comfort to Jesus as he stood by the cross. And Jesus entrusted him with the care of his own mother, Mary. So something special about John? Something special about Daniel. They were greatly beloved of God. But we read, and Daniel and John were both given special visions and Holy Ghost information from the Lord about the end times, which is what we're focusing on in this program, The Midnight Cry. So in the book of Daniel, he went through many trials and tribulations, though notably the most famous ones being in the lion's den with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh, they were in the, and also, um, well, I think he was anyway. And also he was definitely, no, guess what? In the fiery furnace was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And in the lion's den was Daniel. Why was he put in the lion's den? Because of unrighteous laws that were made against him. Because that was the only way the devil could get him. Because he himself had done nothing wrong. And it says that if you read in Daniel chapter 6. 
that the people who were working with him hated him. They were jealous of him because of the high promotion and favor he'd received from the king. That's what we're looking at today. The letter of the law killeth. His so-called colleagues who were actually backstabbers and very jealous servants of Satan, they managed to get round the king of that time, who was Darius. They managed to get round him to write or have written an unrighteous decree which could not be changed. And they actually fooled and deceived the king himself as well as Daniel. Now, we haven't time to deal with all that in this program today. But if you want to look up Daniel chapter 6, see how the letter of the law, there's a real example of how the letter of the law kills. They actually, by that law, um, forced Daniel to be thrown into the lion's den. But God rescued him and clothed the lion's mouth. But you see, there are lessons there. Number one, the letter of the law killeth. Number two, don't be afraid, because Jesus will always strengthen you and be there for you when you're going through these trials. Daniel wasn't afraid. It didn't stop him praying. He knew all about the law, but he still carried on praying to God. Still carried on, even though he knew something would happen to him. Also, we must learn to pray for kings and those in authority. For a start, we could pray for the queen in this country because she took an oath before God in 1953 to serve God with all of her heart and to propagate the Protestant reform religion established by law in this country. That is our constitution. Part of that constitution is the queen's oath. You see, we need to pray for her because she's clearly been deceived. As King Darius was deceived by those sneaky people who managed to persuade him to write a law, knowing that it was going to kill Daniel, they hoped. He didn't want Daniel to go in the lion's den. He was shocked when he saw how the law rebounded on him and on Daniel, whom he really loved. Now, God turned it all to his glory. But there's a lot to learn from this. The letter of the law killeth. It's designed to kill. And Satan always works by the letter of the law. Without mercy, without the Holy Spirit, or mercy, or justice, or anything. Just the letter of the law. That's all. We must watch and pray and be aware of these things. We must look to the old foundations. The foundation of this country was laid by God himself with a godly constitution. We must pray for those in authority, like the queen, like the prime minister, for example. We must pray for them to have wisdom and not to be deceived and to create righteous laws and decrees, dear viewers and listeners. And those of you who are from other countries, you can follow these same principles. Those who are listening from America, from the USA, you're joined with us in a covenant through the Mayflower, Mayflower Compact of 1620 with the Pilgrim Fathers. You need then to look to your foundations, which are same as ours really, and those of other nations who are believers, you also can follow these principles because Jesus is coming soon and he's coming for a holy bride, a holy church. And he wants that everyone should believe and no one should perish. So we need to carry on preaching the gospel to every creature. Dear viewers and listeners, thank you so much. I'm just going to sing one more song now. Don't give up those who are believers, because it's too much to gain, to lose. Too many miles behind me Too many trials are through Too To gain, to lose Too many sunsets Lie beyond the mountain Too many rivers My feet have walked through Too many treasures Are waiting over your 
and it's too much to gain to lose I've crossed the hot burning desert I was struggling Right road to choose, but somewhere on the head, there's cool, clear water, and defeat is one word I never use. To me. My feet have walked through too many treasures are waiting over yonder and it's too much to gain to lose too many treasures are waiting over yonder is too much to gain to lose so keep on keep on the path dear viewers and listeners is too much to gain to lose don't forget as well that very shortly in less than 20 minutes in fact the next program coming from ECC TV will be Celts for Christ Jesus, 2 p.m. UK time. This is Lindsay Griffith signing off now and saying, God bless you. Till next time. Bye.